What's up, everybody? All right, this whole video is going to be about losing an eBay account because I know there's a lot of misinformation out there. And the first thing that's most common when you hear about people losing their eBay accounts is that they don't tell you exactly what happened. Um, and the reality is it, eBay doesn't just ban accounts for no reason. The only time they're going to do that is if they actually think that you're fraudulous and you're not who you say you are. Um, they are always going to, like, they don't just ban you. For me, this is the fourth time I got in trouble for something, right? And it doesn't even have to be the fourth time of getting in trouble in general. In order to actually get banned, you have to get in trouble for the same thing multiple times, four times, within a set period of time, okay? So in this case, I'm going to go into more detail about this, but what happened to me is the result of a loophole in eBay's Vero program. It doesn't actually have to do with the fact that I was drop shipping. So if you think that I got banned because I'm a drop shipper, it actually has nothing to do. It, that's not why. I got banned for other reasons that I'll go over. Okay. I want to make sure that when it comes to one of my eBay accounts getting banned, you guys can know exactly what happened because I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you all the emails. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into my email and we're going to look for counterfeits. Here we go. All right, perfect. And then I'm going to show you the emails that I got from eBay and the timestamps and everything. But before I do that, let me let me show you what it at what it actually looks like when you have a banned eBay account. So I can log in, I still see stuff, right? Um, I can still look at like my selling dashboard thing. I think. Yeah, see? We can see how things were going and then boom! <laughs> Nothing. Zero, right? Because I, I don't have any items. So this stuff is all pretty much the same. I can still respond to cases. I got to like deal with whatever return requests get opened and that kind of thing. However, I cannot message buyers. I just can't. Like I can message a buyer or sorry, I can message somebody who already purchased something from me and they message me, I can respond to them. But if I try and message anybody who hasn't purchased something from me already, then eBay gives me an error message. I cannot communicate. Also, when you get banned, all of your account subscriptions are canceled, right? So this was an enterprise store. Now I have no subscription. And what I, what I did learn is that if your eBay account gets banned, it appears that you are uh, removed from your contractual yearly obligation to your store. Like imagine you're in a yearly uh, commitment to a store. Typically, if you were going to downgrade or quit eBay, you would have to pay like a 15 or 20% fee of the remaining balance of that yearly commitment, right? Um, and with an enterprise store, this is thousands and thousands of dollars. But that fee doesn't seem to apply. Um, I just have what was, like basically my bill just gets consolidated and then I owe eBay six grand, which is fine because the reality is like, I have most of that money. Um, but now there's no, like eBay's leverage to get me to pay them early and on time is to be able to continue to sell. They took away that leverage from me. So yeah, I owe eBay six grand now and I have a lot of it, but there's absolutely no incentive for me to pay it and it's actively against my best interest to pay it because the way the eBay's billing system works, once your account becomes past due, you are eligible for negotiation. So if I were to pay this money now, nothing would really happen, right? Because I, I have to pay off this balance, otherwise I get in legal trouble, right? But what I will do is I will just wait until it's past due because then my account is flagged as past due. And this makes me eligible for deals and discounts and stuff, right? So then I go and I email eBay's billing collection department and I tell them the whole story. I say, hey, this is what's happening. I intend on paying this off, but I'm trying to do everything that I can to make sure that, you know, like I paid $3,000 for 30 days of a store and only had that store for 15 days before getting banned, right? So like, 
that's 1500 bucks worth of stuff that was impossible to use and never used. So there, there's, there's room for me to make an argument here. And it's possible nothing's going to happen. It's also possible I'll get half, I'll get 1500 bucks from doing that, right? So I'm absolutely not, I'm just going to ignore this number for now until the account's past due, and then I'm going to work with them. And then I'll set something up to have like a monthly payment, um, whether it's to eBay itself or I pay eBay off and like take some kind of loan out. Because like, that's like a basic cash flow decision. You don't want a ton of money just going out of you unless it benefits you, right? Like if I were to get something out of this, and typically by paying this money, I would maintain my ability to continue to sell on ebay i've lost that so at this point that doesn't matter anymore right so i just wanted to explain because i know a lot of you guys might be nervous you see this big number and you're like oh you owe them so much money like guys this is normal i've, I've had monthly bills for ebay that are up to 11 or twelve thousand dollars. so a six thousand dollar one eh, like yeah it's a lot of money to you guys but for this bulk store that's a normal ebay bill Right, so that that has nothing to do with why the account got banned. All right, and now let's get into those juicy details. Okay, so again, you gotta understand the way the system works with eBay. In order to get banned, you have to get in trouble four times. The first time you get in trouble, you'll get a warning. The second time you'll get in trouble, you'll get a seven day ban. The third time you get in trouble, you'll get a 30 day ban. And the last time you get in trouble, you will be permanently banned, okay? And this isn't, like, that's not actually true. I could actually get this eBay account back. I could fight it, and I could restore everything. That's all doable. Um, it's just not a good decision for me as an individual in this particular position. That being said, I'm sure there are people out there who would love this eBay account, you know? Absolutely. But, you know, this is just how it is. So what we're going to do is find the first emails that I received. Um, counterfeit, and this would have been earlier this year. What I need to find is, here we go, trademark violation, unauthorized. Was this the first one? Trademark rights. No. No. Okay, that's not the kind of notification I'm looking for. I'm looking for, I guess I can just look at the most recent one, right? So what we need to find is, here we go. Your listing or product was removed after the rights owner reported it as counterfeit. So was removed after. We can just copy this whole string, and then this should allow us to identify every email that I've ever received about this subject. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so when did this happen for the first time? Okay, this, here we go. This is perfect. All right, so now I can get into this whole problem with eBay. Um, we Like, I, I communicate that this is a Vero thing. But it, it technically is a, a loophole that companies use to reduce competition on eBay, right? What you're going to find with all of these, right? Okay, so I, you don't need to read all this. We're just going to read certain sentences. Okay, I got a ban. This was on, or I got a notification. This was on September 15th, 2017. So last year, right? About your listing was removed after the rights owner reported it as counterfeit. Okay? Then we scroll down. And it's some like snoozeberry, whatever, strawberry thing from Walmart. The reality is, this item is real. This is not a fake item. And that is also true for every single counterfeit claim made against me. And that's the great irony here. There were tons of great reasons for me to actually lose my eBay account. Tons and tons of them. Like, there were loads. But I didn't lose my account for any of those reasons. I lost my eBay account because certain companies will falsely claim that you are counterfeiting their goods, right? And some of these people have good intentions. They don't know what dropshipping is. They see that you're selling something. They know that they didn't make it. So therefore, you have to be counterfeiting it. That's their headspace, right? Whereas if they knew that dropshipping, they might realize, oh, 
he's selling it and it's like double the price I make it for because he's actually buying it from me. And then anytime I buy it, they buy it from Walmart, which is one of my dedicated suppliers. And it is real, right? The reality is it's a real item, but this is drop shipping. So there's a whole fucking world of misinformation and, and we are part of it, right? So that's also being kind of nice to these companies because the reality is that a lot of them do know they don't give a fuck and they know that like they literally they see that you're selling one of their items and they want to reduce their competition so they go and they click on report and then instead of clicking violating trademark or violating um violating your like intellectual property rights they click counterfeiting it's literally a box a checkbox instead of clicking one you click counterfeit and then eBay takes it way more seriously, incredibly seriously, because this is a big problem on eBay, was people selling fake products from China, right? And I can tell you, there isn't a single listing in this account from China. All this shit was from Walmart. And the funny thing is, if you were physically selling these products, the same thing would have happened. I didn't get in trouble with these companies for using their images. I got in trouble with these companies for having their product for sale at all. This is something that could happen to a physical seller. The chance of it is incredibly, incredibly unlikely, right? Because you don't have, have to get 100,000 items. You have to do a lot of work. That's crazy. Whereas 100,000 dropshipping listings is actually like, feasible, right? But the reality is, me getting banned, it came from companies abusing the counterfeit system, right? So there's multiple ways that they can do this. Basically, any time that they can report you for anything as a Vero rights holder, they could just claim that you're counterfeiting instead. And you can defend yourself against this, but you can only defend yourself retroactively. You cannot prevent your account from getting banned. Once it gets banned, then eBay has a resolution department, an appeal process, right? But say that you get a 30-day ban, there's no appeal process for that. You can try and talk to eBay, and this is what they're going to tell you. They're going to tell you to reach out to the rights holder, okay? And you can reach out to the rights holder, but guess what? They're not going to respond because none of them do. You can send emails to every email participant profile on the Vero rights list on eBay and you get a response rate of like 20%. It's horrendous and horrible. It's an incredibly outdated system. To the point, let me show you this. Let me show you this real quick because this, this really puts the cherry on the top. We're gonna look for eBay Vero study. And we're looking for, here we go. Okay, this is an incredibly detailed study done about Ebo, eBay's Vero program and how it's just horrible and how it fails to fix the problems. All it does is give eBay the ability to legally protect itself at the expense of its sellers. And it's a good indication of a whole series of things that show you eBay isn't a good, well-run company. eBay got big and doesn't really understand what it is and is attempting to be Amazon, which is just dumb. And <laughs> It's outsourced. Tons of eBay's departments have nothing to do with each other. You can call eBay and have like one question and get a completely different answer. Talk to someone else, get a completely different answer. Like it's, it's, that's normal. eBay is a mess. <laughs> and you know, you can, you can use it and make money, but the reality is, all right, this report about this Vero loophole the guy even, he goes so far into it as he actually does a study where he emails every person in the Vero participant program, right? And if you don't know what that is, Vero program eBay. eBay has this thing on their page and they're like, oh, hey guys, look, we can tell, this is how you know what you're not supposed to sell because we have a page where all the people who don't want you selling their stuff, they put their contact information and you can just check it. It's all there. Everything's fine. Guess what? It sucks. It's horrible. You can click here on this Vero participant profile, right? And then you get an alphabetized list of all of the company names. Well, let's see something real quick. All right, so... Just for reference, both of the companies that fucked me aren't even on this list. They don't even have a Vero program, 
right? The companies that led to me losing my eBay account are not even on eBay's list of companies to avoid. Like, it's, it's amazing because that, that's so true. That's, that, that shows you the reality of eBay. You know, it really does. And I'm not trying to hate on eBay. Like, I love it and it changed my life, but it's a mess. Like, it's absolutely a mess. I have enough information now about this program that if I wanted to get another person's account banned, I could actually do it. All I would need to do is slip certain items into their inventory and I would be able to get them shut down for counterfeiting, which is just fucked. Like, that's absolutely fucked. And they would be able to, like, fight it by getting a lawyer involved and proving that they're not counterfeiting, but they would have to spend money to do that. And this should not be possible. Like, that is absolutely not a thing that should be possible, right? And so now let's go back. Now you understand more. Okay, you understand what the Vero program is, that kind of stuff. Um, so in this case, this was the first time I got in trouble. I got a slap in the wrist. They just removed the listing. They claimed that the guy reported it as counterfeit. And at this point, I now have one ding related to counterfeit, right? So now let's go back and see. And it's possible I might have more dings than that because it resets every 12, um, 12 months, I think. There's a lot I don't understand about the system because it's proprietary and they can't share it. So I just have to kind of like guess. Um, but in general, you have four, four you, you get banned you get in trouble four times, and on the fourth time, you get banned, usually, right? So here we have, okay, it looks like this is the same item. So same company, different item. Despicable Me, Robot, Minion, Bob. Okay, so here, again, I was claimed for having a counterfeit item that was just some random Despicable Me thing sold by Walmart. Again, real products, not counterfeit, right? And then here we go. On February 22nd of 2018 or 2017, I received a my first seven-day selling restriction. And it was because of supposedly counterfeiting a wired controller for the PS3 and some kind of like NCAA state tumbler. And, like, when I talked to the eBay rep, he was like, uh, oh. Oh, yeah, you're right. That's not, that's not fake. Well, oh, well. <laughs> like, that was, that was their mentality on it. And the PS3 thing was because, because I said wired controller for the PS3, like, the word Sony was somewhere in the description. So, Sony claimed that it was counterfeit. Like, I was saying that it was a real Sony controller when it's, not i mean and the title was literally wired controller for ps3 right like i mean it's not like it's like oh great amazing awesome sony controller for playstation 3 that's aftermarket you know like i'm not a wired controller for ps3 doesn't sound like it's a sony official controller like it really doesn't you know but whatever whatever that's in the past right and then let's just keep keep looking at these these restrictions right and what was this? What happened here? Oh, yeah. Purisonic toothbrush heads. Again, selling a real item, but the company claimed it was counterfeit. And so that was the seven-day restriction. And that happened February of 2017. Then in May, that's when the GK hair bullcrap started. Okay. God dang. And I've gone over this before, but basically there's this one particular company called Global Carrot. Multiple products for sale with this company. And they see this. Your listing was removed after the rights owner reported it as counterfeit. The reason that the rights owners do this is because they know that if they report it as counterfeit, it gets taken down almost immediately. Whereas if they report it as something else then it stays up and sometimes never gets taken down so like the rights holders are placed in a position where they are the ones who do the policing and just for some reference 
In governments, typically you have this separation. You have these three different branches because you really don't want the people making the laws to be the same people enforcing the laws. This kind of just brings a lot of corruption and other bad problems you don't want, right? eBay, that's how eBay handles this system. They allow the same people who make the profiles to police the profiles. Because all eBay really gives a fuck about is covering their ass. eBay views themselves as this great thing. And you aren't there. Like, they are made of sellers. But the reality is they really don't care about their sellers that much. They like to say that they do. But they don't make business. In, uh, they do not make business decisions that indicate that they really, really care about their sellers. And I'm saying they, and it's, that's kind of misleading too, because there are tons of amazing, absolutely incredible eBay employees, particularly people on the Anchor Store support team that like I've dealt with, who have really been helpful and I've had some amazing conversations with. But the reality is these people don't run the company, and the people who run the company don't really care. <laughs> that's just how it is. Like right now, this whole dropshipping thing, eBay could make loads of money if it worked with dropshippers and controlled them. eBay could get loads of money because they could bring in a new scene of dropshipping where the platform is actively working with you to dropship their products, right? And if eBay were to do this, that would separate them from Amazon. That would mean that they are making a decision that is the opposite of what Amazon did, right? But that's not the direction eBay's going in. eBay wants to be Amazon, but it's not. It's not. It's just not Amazon, right? It has to do things to make itself different. Otherwise, it's just going to always be an Amazon shadow, you know? But anyway, I'm getting, obviously, I'm really passionate about this because it's just like, I've learned a lot about this system and I knew that this would be how I got ended once it started happening because I could see like the size of the account, um, the way that I would list items, like can't prevent all of this, right? So, so ultimately it happened. Um, that That's okay. The point is, all right, seven day ban. You guys have gotten this. You understand that it's not so much that there's a specific product as it is that there are certain companies that are going to falsify, falsely claim counterfeit, right? And that's how I got banned. Um, these false counterfeit, cl counterfeit claims. And it would be, you know, I wish I was actually counterfeiting products. Like, I could have actually been selling from stuff from China, and then maybe there was an actual chance that the item was fake. But in these case, I have looked at every one of these items, and if I'm if the one that I sold or almost sold was fake, that would mean that the one that Walmart as an entity is selling is fake. Right? Like... I mean, like, you can... They're obviously not fake. They're obviously real. And the fact that eBay doesn't even have a system for this! Like... For their counterfeiting program, they don't even have a way to show them that the item is real. They just go off of the word of the rights holders. Which is inherently fucked. Like, it's just ridiculous, you know? But it is what it is. Oh, yeah, and my report, my, or sorry, my, my point about this report that I never made... This is a really in-detailed report. You can find it, right? It it gives you tons of information about Vero and does it way more scientifically than me. It shows about eBay's problems. It shows about like actual response rates. Like they messaged every person who had an email in the Vero program and had like a 30% response rate or something like that, right? You know what the greatest kicker is? Guess how old this study is. When do you think... This amazing study was published. 2016! That was 12 years ago! 12 years ago! This Vero problem was so big that 12 years ago somebody wrote a study about it and it still hasn't been fixed. Like, what does that tell you, huh? What does that tell you about eBay? It's, it's ridiculous, you know? Uh, but so now we've done that. Now let's show you the, the actual message that ended it all. All right, here we go. Yep, two days ago. Your eBay account has been restricted. Trademark violation. Unauthorized item. 
Hello, Exponential Enterprise. After reviewing your eBay account and noticing multiple instances of listings that don't follow our guidelines, we've taken the following actions. Your eBay account is indefinitely restricted from selling. You can't use other accounts or register new accounts on eBay. If you do, your accounts could be limited, restricted, or suspended. Listings that don't follow our guidelines have been removed. A list of removed items can be viewed at the bottom of this message. Yeah, they sent me a list of 100,000 items, which is hilarious. Anyway, we've credited all associated fees except for the final value fees for your listings. Oh, really? I don't think so. I don't think you have credited those because, you know, it's a store subscription fee, so we didn't pay any fees. Your listing or product was removed after the rights owner reported it as counterfeit. We urge you to contact the rights owner directly for more information about why they requested the removal of your listing or product or whether you can sell the item. And if you call us, we're going to tell you to reach out to the, the rights owner. And then when you tell us that you did and they didn't respond, we're going to tell you sorry. Um, maybe we can send them a message too. And that's going to be our best response. So best luck. All right, you can still bid on items, buy, and complete transactions you have in progress. If you wish to appeal, you can click help and contact at the top of most EA pages, right? So here we go. This is the kicker here, because it was actually a unique scenario. I wasn't, this, okay, let's, let's read this. We represent Merck, KGAA, the global pharmaceutical company, with regards to enforcement of their intellectual property rights online. Merck, KGAA, is the registered proprietor of the Nairobian trademark in the European Union. This product in question is manufactured by Bernard Industries Pharmaceuticals, which owns the Nairobian trademark in the United States. The United States Nairobian band has no connection with the Merck or Nairobian products manufactured and legally sold in Europe, as listings on eBay European platforms target the EU, specifically the sale of U.S. Neurobian to the site on the EU infringes Merck's trademark. Okay? So basically, because I had something eligible to be shipped into Europe, a company claimed that it was fake, even though it wasn't. This is actually something called a parallel import violation. And this is when companies have different rules about their trademarks based on the country, right? So, yeah, you can use a trademark in the United States. You can't use it in Europe, right? So in this case, instead of this company clicking parallel rights violation, in which case I would have been just told to remove the international shipping from my listing with no other consequences, instead of that happening my account got deleted. Thanks, eBay. Good job. All right, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Ciao.